The Crucible is a play by Arthur Miller. It is a tragedy, serves as allegory, and is historical fiction. It was written in 1953. In it, playwright Arthur Miller employs a fictionalized account of Massachusetts Bay colonists accused of witchcraft in 1692. In the Crucible, false accusations and fear are used to imprison and kill many people accused of being witches. In this way, the Crucible stands as an allegory for McCarthy's communist hunt, during which many people were also killed and imprisoned due to accusations of communism. Communists were referred to as Reds due to their allegiance to the Red Soviet flag. People became very worried over the threat of communists in America which led to the government drilling officials to test their loyalty to America, and this was known as the Red Scare. At the time Miller wrote The Crucible, Senator Joseph McCarthy was leading hearings accusing American citizens of being members of, or sympathetic to, communism. Suspected communists could be blackballed from work or even imprisoned, and many accused informed on their friends and neighbors to save themselves. The Crucible parallels McCarthyism in that many of the characters do the same thing. They implicate one another as witches in order to avoid trial of themselves, or because of hysteria, or because of fear. The Crucible is a tragedy in that its protagonist, John Proctor, is for the most part an upstanding character. He's very honest and highly moral, but he has a terrible flaw. He has had an affair with his family's servant, Abigail, and his guilt over the affair and his fear of people finding out about the affair causes many of his problems, which compound to the point where he is falsely accused of witchcraft himself. In the end, he dies hung in a way a tragic hero dies in Greek tragedies. The Crucible is set in a real place during a culturally recognizable time. The details in the action of the story are a mix of actual events and then one from Miller's own imagination where he fills in the gaps. For instance, many of the characters are consolidated from real historical people, and we do not know the actual motivations of folks in terms of the accusations of witchcraft, where John Proctor is motivated by guilt and Abigail is motivated by jealousy. The basic conflict of the Crucible is the hysteria which led to the death of many of the citizens of Salem. On a deeper level, it represents the tension between repressive forces of social order and individual freedoms. Act One opens with Reverend Paris kneeling by the bed of his daughter, Betty. She had fainted the previous night when the minister found her and the group of her friends dancing in the woods. Betty's friend, Abigail, contends they were only dancing, and the reason Betty fainted was that Reverend Paris jumped out of the bushes and startled her. In the background, and before the play even starts, there have been long simmering resentments and grievances in the town of Salem. For instance, John Proctor has been critical of Reverend Paris over his sermons. There have been a number of land disputes between neighbors, and there have been accusations being thrown around around people having certain kinds of luck over other people. As rumors of the supernatural run abound in Salem, Reverend Hale is called in. And although he is anxious to prove his expertise in getting rid of witchcraft, he is the first sensible man, as John Proctor calls him, in the story. Reverend Hale interrogates Abigail and Tichuba about their activities in the woods, and both fold under the power of suggestion. Tichuba Indian was an enslaved woman who was one of the first people to be accused of witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials, and it was she that was blamed for leading the girls in the woods. The inciting incident of the play occurs when Abigail finally confesses to witchcraft and then her accusations rapidly spiral out of control. Terrified, Tituba says the devil has spoken to her, and she begins naming citizens in Salem as witches. Betty wakes up and also starts naming other citizens as the devil's disciples. 
Finally, Abigail joins her by accusing other townspeople. As the background issues continue to brew, Salem quickly falls apart. Neighbor turns on neighbor in ways of both releasing past angers over issues and grievances, but also out of fear of being implicated as a witch. At the beginning of Act 2, John Proctor and his wife, Elizabeth Proctor, are tiptoeing around one another because of John Proctor's confession of his affair with Abigail. At this time of the story, 14 people have been jailed due to the accusations of being a witch, and the judges have claimed they will hang anyone convicted of practicing witchcraft. Also, the justices consider Abigail an upstanding witness, believing the girls were bewitched. By the end of Act 2, 39 people have now been arrested. Elizabeth Proctor has been named among those who may be practicing witchcraft. John Proctor promises to go to Abigail and demand that she stops this fraud. However, in that process, Elizabeth is arrested for trying to murder Abigail, where she has been claimed to be casting a spell on her. In Act 3, petitions and depositions are provided, claiming the innocence of a number of the wives who have been accused of being witches. Mary Warren, the maid of the Proctors, says that she and the girls have been faking and recants under heavy interrogation. At this time, Proctor also confesses his affair with Abigail and says that his wife will affirm this because she would never lie. Unfortunately, Elizabeth does lie, thinking she's trying to save her husband's reputation. Proctor is then arrested for lying and trying to bewitch Mary Warren, his maid. At this point, Reverend Hale denounces the court and abandons it. Here at the climax of the play, Proctor finally confesses his affair with Abigail and releases his guilt of his sins and sacrifices his good name to save his wife. Unfortunately, this was in vain. As I had said, this is a tragedy. And at this point, most of the town is in such a frenzy, the difference between fact and fiction has been completely destroyed and the characters have lost all sense of reason. John Proctor bears his unflinching integrity by not implicating the names of others or accusing them of sorcery. And by the end of the play, Elizabeth forgives her husband for adultery and says she doesn't want him to die. Proctor even agrees to confess, knowing that it's evil for his wife. However, when a verbal confession does not satisfy the court, and it's turned out that he must sign a confession, and that it will be nailed to the courtroom door, he refuses. He considers himself dead if he has com compromised his values. And so he walks to the gallows saying, how may I live without my name? There is great irony in Miller's own life. After publishing The Crucible, the House of Representatives Committee on Un-American Activities, infamous for accusing public figures of having communist ties, investigated Miller. That investigation led to the fact that he was unable to attend the London premiere of The Crucible as he was being questioned. In it, he famously once said, I have had to go to hell to meet the devil. 